24-7 News. We begin with a breaking news alert. Two major stories breaking at this hour. A big development in the days-long manhunt for two murder suspects in Northern Virginia. And in Maryland, a fiery plane crash into a neighborhood in Prince George's County, leaving one person dead. Seven on your side following both of these stories closely for you. Now, but we begin with the break in the case in Manassas. Two suspects accused of shooting and killing a man at a Denny's have both been caught. Jordan Anderson and Ryan Walker are now in custody facing murder charges. ABC 7's Katie Kairos joins us live now. And Katie, you found out what led police to the suspects after days of searching. Yes, Carl, police tell us that forensic evidence from inside the restaurant actually helped them make the arrest today. And the Denny's reopened on Friday, but people told us they weren't able to breathe easy until today. Sunday brunch at Denny's, tradition for many of the families braving the rain, but one that some thought twice about in the wake of Thursday's brutal murder. This is so scary. But then, relief. Police say they've arrested the two men shown on this surveillance video, the mass suspects bursting into the Denny's, one waving a gun. The shooting happened at 2 a.m. on December 26. Police say the pair shot and killed husband and father Yusuf Osgur as he picked up a food delivery. A second man was also shot and wounded. We were just sitting there two hours and a half before that happened. Oscar worked for DoorDash and he was well known to locals. We knew that guy and he was a nice man and everything. So I told my wife, I felt like he was like family related in a way. Police arrested 22 year old Jordan Anderson in Fairfax County. Hours later, U.S. Marshals brought 22 year old Ryan Thomas Walker into custody in Maryland. Both men are charged with murder. Police believe they're responsible for three other area robberies since December 21st. Turn themselves in, and but they never did it, so I hope they go hard on them. Well, at the time of the robbery, police say that there were 23 people inside this restaurant, staff and customers, and they say the suspects told everyone to get on the ground. Everyone complied, and it wasn't until they were leaving that they shot the two victims. Police say they received more than 100 tips from the public in this case. Live in Manassas, Virginia, Katie Kairos, ABC 7 News. Katie, thank you. Turning now to the other major breaking story that we're following, a deadly plane crash in a Prince George's County neighborhood. Our Tobias Rodriguez just arrived on that scene within the hour and joins us live after learning more about what happened. Tobias. Yes, we're here in Lanham. It's a very busy scene here. You can see a lot of it is blocked off with caution tape. Right behind me, you can see fire officials working to figure out why a small plane crashed into a home here on Auburn Avenue. Now, what we've been told is that a small plane did hit the back of this home, the carport area. You can see some of the carport has fallen down and some of the rubble is just there on the lawn. We were able to speak with neighbors here in this area that say that they heard the plane going right over their homes. They say it was very loud. And what law enforcement has told us at this point is that one person has been pronounced, been pronounced dead in the crash. They say this type of plane can carry only one person. According to authorities, the plane hit the back of this home, the carport area. No one was home at the time of the crash. The neighbors we spoke with say the owners of the home are in Florida on vacation. Investigators say there was no evacuation of the homes in the area and no other homes damaged and they're looking into hazmat related concerns. When we have an incident like this with an airplane, of course, there's always the potential for having a hazmat exposure with the jet fuel. So at this time, our hazmat team, as well as our technical rescue units are on scene to make sure that the carport is stable uh, for, for, us, for us to go in and investigate, as well as to ensure that there's no runoff or any damage or any chemicals exposure to the neighborhood. At this time, law enforcement hasn't been able to confirm the ID of the person who died or where this plane took off from. They're also still trying to figure out why this plane crashed. Reporting live in Lanham, Tobias Rodriguez, ABC 7 News. All right, Tobias, thank you. Seven on your side will continue to follow both of these breaking stories and bring you any updates just as soon as we learn more. You can get updates sent straight to your phone through the ABC 7 News app.
Now, now to the weather, just a wet and dreary day out there all across the DMV. It's just a, a drastic change from the beautiful weather that we had here yesterday, but those spring like temperatures, they're going to be making a comeback. Chief Meteorologist Bill Kelly is tracking another warm up headed this way. Well, good evening, Carl. Good evening, everyone out the door tomorrow morning. Wait till you see the numbers. It's going to feel more like late spring. It's pretty remarkable outside right now. Cooler than yesterday, but still pretty mild at 52 in DC, 45 Leesburg, 46 Hagerstown. We got 45 right now around Winchester with some off and on rain. We've picked up three tenths of an inch so far around the DC Metro and getting some good rain out near Tyson's around the Capitol Beltway, heading down toward the mixing bowl out into Prince George's County, right up to 70 into Frederick and Washington County. A little bit of a break off to the west, but this is fairly light rain, but it will continue off and on tonight. In addition to that, look how low the clouds are. Areas of dense fog going to be possible as well. Now, in terms of temperatures, to me, that is going to be a big part of our story. We're in the low 50s now. Our numbers are going to hold, if not go up the next couple of hours. But late tonight, the warm front pushes in. Look at these out the door temperatures for your Monday morning. 62 in DC, 60 Leesburg, 61 in Luray. Again, these are typical for low temperatures late May, early June, and they're going up from there when we talk about our high. That and more coming up in just a few minutes, Carl. All right, Bill, thank you very much. Well, new at five, Arlington police are investigating a shooting that happened early this morning. Police say they were called out just before four o'clock this morning and found a man who had been shot. He was taken to the hospital and is expected to survive. Police say the shooting happened during a fight between two people who knew each other. We're working right now to find out if anyone has been arrested. And tonight, 10 people are without a place to live after a massive fire in Frederick County. It took 75 firefighters over an hour to get that fire under control, but not before it seriously damaged several apartments and the Burkittsville Post Office that's attached to that building. One person had to be taken to the hospital to be checked out after falling while trying to escape the fire, but everyone did make it out. Investigators are working to find out what started that fire. And more breaking news now out of Texas. Two people have been killed in a shooting at a church near Fort Worth. We've just learned in the last 30 minutes that one of those killed was the gunman who was killed when an armed security guard and at least two armed parishioners returned fire and rushed him. A second victim who was shot by the gunman is in the hospital in critical condition. Authorities are still on the scene. They're investigating at this hour. We're going to bring you any updates just as soon as we learn more. And out of New York, where a hate crime task force is being is investigating a stabbing attack at a Hanukkah celebration. Five people were hospitalized Saturday night and two are in critical condition. As Rick Damagella reports, the attack is the latest in a string of anti-Semitic violence. On the second to last night of Hanukkah, more than 100 people were celebrating inside a rabbi's home in suburban New York when a man entered the house and started stabbing people. I Take saw him walking in by the door. I asked who was coming in in the middle of the night with the umbrella. While I was saying that, he pulled it out from the tank. People inside say the horrifying scene quickly unfolded before their eyes. I ran into the other room because I tried to save my life. The attack is the latest in a string of anti-Semitic acts against the Jewish community. Governor Cuomo called the attack an act of domestic terrorism. These are people who intend to create mass harm, mass violence, generate fear based on race, color, creed. That is the definition of terrorism. The suspect appeared in court Sunday morning where he pleaded not guilty. Authorities in New York City apprehended him overnight. Officials acted on a tip with the suspect's license plate number and took him into custody without incident. He will be facing five counts of attempted murder and one count of burglary. Now the community turns its attention to healing. Nobody thinks it can happen in your hometown. Nobody thinks it can happen in your home county or your city. Well, people, it happened and it happened here. I'm Rick Damagella reporting. The governor of New York said there have been more than a dozen hate-related incidents against the state's Jewish community just since December 8th. Authorities have ramped up security around synagogues and other places of worship. And President Trump tweeted today the anti-Semitic attack in Monzi, New York on the seventh night of Hanukkah last night is horrific. We must all come together to fight, confront and eradicate the evil scourge of anti-Semitism. Melania and I wish the victims a quick and full recovery. Well, coming up, connecting the dots on your family tree could soon get a lot more expensive. Why the government is making it harder to find out your own genealogy. 
And we continue to follow breaking news in Prince George's County. Cleanup underway right now after a small plane crashed in a neighborhood in Lanham. This is a live look at the scene right now. Coming up in just two minutes, we have dramatic new video just into the newsroom of where that plane went down. Stay with us. To follow that breaking news out of Prince George's County, a plane crash in Lanham killing one person. This is new video that just came into the newsroom. From that scene, you can see the damage to the home and the smoke still pouring out of there after the fire crews finished putting out the flames and debris just thrown everywhere. Our Tobias Rodriguez is still on the scene and we'll be sure to bring you more updates on air and online just as soon as they come into the newsroom. An Ohio doctor facing multiple murder charges is fighting to clear his name. He's accused of intentionally causing fatal overdoses in his own patients. That doctor is now taking his own legal action. Trevor, Trevor Alt following the story for us tonight. The Ohio doctor accused of murdering more than two dozen patients is fighting back against the hospital that employed him. His attorney filing a lawsuit alleging this is perhaps the most egregious case of defamation in Ohio's recent history. I don't think where you can take a young doctor with a promising career and outright call him a murderer, a mass murderer or serial killer and, and uh, get away with it. Dr. William Husel is accused of intentionally causing fatal overdoses in dozens of patients. Last December, he was fired from Mount Carmel Health Systems and his medical license suspended. In June, he was charged with 25 counts of murder. This breach of a doctor's oath is vile and worthy of today's actions. But Dr. Husel's attorney claims the accusations his client is a killer are based on zero evidence and nothing but false statements, and that Dr. Husel was only trying to provide comfort for patients in their final moments. Basically, the prosecution's theory is that these patients died in five minutes as opposed to ten minutes. The lawsuit goes further, claiming the patients died from their illnesses, not the fentanyl he prescribed, and that the hospital knew full well that no policies were violated because the actual policies in effect explicitly permitted and encouraged the care Dr. Husel and the nurses provided to patients. The hospital has since settled multiple civil cases with patients' families for hundreds of thousands of dollars. In response to Dr. Husel's defamation suit, Mount Carmel tells us allegations such as as these are unfounded. We completed an extensive review of patient care provided by Dr. William Husel and stand by our decisions. That was Trevor Alt reporting. Unearthing the roots of your family tree could soon become a lot more expensive. U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services wants to increase the fees by 500 percent for a number of applications and documents. That includes historical records of deceased immigrants who came to the U.S. between the late 19th and mid 20th centuries. A group of genealogists, historians and advocates is organizing a public campaign to convince the agency not to hike those fees. And Bill, you're joining me here. What yep. a difference a day makes. Yeah. My goodness, it's drastic out there. It is drastic. We need the rain. We went 11 days straight with yeah. no rain at all. Right. We have it out there now. It's a little cooler, but still above normal. Yeah. Still above normal. Uh, but I want to show you some time lapse images from around the region, everywhere from Sweet. Spotsylvania to Bluemont. I mean, that's pretty much, yeah. if you live in the DMV, that's what it looked like all out your window today. Like that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So once the rain started, it went not heavy rain. We picked up three tenths of an inch so far around the area, and that will continue as we go into the nighttime. Now, this is our camera in Northwest DC. We're up a couple of hundred feet, but you can see how low the clouds are. Areas of dense fog going to be out there tonight as well, so just be careful if you're traveling. 52s for DC, Chantilly, and Manassas. Little cooler, but still well above freezing for Gaithersburg and Martinsburg into the upper 40s. Now our temperatures, look at what they do. They go up. A warm front coming through tonight, so we got 53 at 8, got about 54 at 10. By midnight, we're at 55. Out the door tomorrow morning, 7, 8 o'clock, we're in the 60s, ending up in the upper 60s by about noon before the cold front comes through. So this is a rain event for everybody, even the highest of the elevations, by far rain. And not just here. you got to go all the way up to upstate New York to find any of that uh, turning into snow. And then back out west, there are some storms on the southern end of this. So I want to walk you through because that warm front is going to work through overnight. So for us, it is often on rain showers all night long. Your commute will likely be wet tomorrow. But once again, it is rain. This is not ice, snow, any of those things. And that will last through at least the first part of the day. The cold front itself will sweep on through probably 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And then behind it, we'll start to dry things off. And then that moves on out. And watch as we go into the last day of the year. 
skies start to clear and your New Year's Eve day is looking fantastic. Your New Year's Eve evening looks dry around our area. Just a few clouds, but up the I-95 corridor, that's going to be the same. Philadelphia, New York, when the ball drops there, it will be a dry New Year's Eve. And then Wednesday, actually looking pretty good as well. So for tomorrow, the one thing I want you to know, in addition to, you know, of course, the temperatures and the chance of rain, is we also have the potential for a few storms here and there, especially as that front gets closer. From D.C. South, we're in what's called a marginal risk, and that means an isolated strong storm or two possible. I think it might be a little bit of an overreach, but it is there. So 52 on Tuesday. There's our day tomorrow. Rain likely through the afternoon. We drop temperatures on Tuesday. Wednesday, we start out at 48 degrees. Then we are tracking yet another rainmaker, and it's a rainmaker on Friday with temperatures that go up into the 50s. So we're really going to be watching that. Looking for our first snow, we definitely do not see it uh, in our forecast, at least in the next seven days. And again, dry for your New Year's Eve. So get out there and enjoy. Scott. All right, Bill, thank you. Sunday hoops in College Park. The Terps trying to get back in the win column against Bryant. Plus, changes could be coming to the Redskins front office. We'll explain why tomorrow could be a turning point for the franchise. Sports is next. Stay with us. The Washington Redskins are on the football field right now in Dallas, wrapping up their disappointing 2019 season. Many Redskins fans looking forward to turning that page. Let me just put it this way. Tomorrow is going to be a big day at Redskins Park. Of course, the players will be cleaning out their lockers, heading to their respective offseason homes. But the major headliner comes from multiple reports saying Bruce Allen is out as president of football operations. Allen has been part of more than 100 losses during his time in Washington. There are also reports that the Redskins could be announcing a new head coach as soon as tomorrow. Former Carolina head coach Ron Rivera appears to be the front runner. I will be at Redskins Park tomorrow with any developments so keep it on ABC 7 for all of those Redskins changes. The New England Patriots in the playoffs and with a bye almost a given right? No the Dolphins score late in the game Fitzpatrick to Mike Gusecki Miami with the stunner 27 to 24. The Patriots will now be the three seed in the AFC playoffs losing that first round bye. Last night's Fiesta Bowl was something else. Clemson and Ohio State playing a classic. The Buckeyes looking for the game winning touchdown when Justin Fields gets intercepted by Nolan Turner. Fields can't believe it. The Tigers celebrate on the field. Clemson winning 29 to 23 advancing to the national championship game. It hasn't been a good couple of weeks for the Maryland men's basketball team. The Terps have lost two straight games both coming on the road. Then news broke on Friday that the Mitchell twins will be leaving the program and transferring the Maryland depth on the bench taking a major hit. The Terps back home today facing Bryant, a guy that Maryland fans have been waiting for all season long. Chole Mariel with a follow slam. Mariel with six points, five boards and one block in his debut. Next trip down the court, Jalen Smith delivering the dunk 11 and 10 for the sophomore. Anthony Cowan led the way with Maryland with 19 points. The Terps get a much needed win before conference play 84 to 70. A Prince William County swimmer is racking up the medals with the Special Olympics. We take you to Swim Kids in Woodbridge for tonight's rising star. Swim cap, Tricky. goggles, Go. then a dive into the pool to begin another workout. When it's time to race, I basically put my game face on, otherwise known as a poker face. Don't let Tori Martin fool you. She's a natural in the water. She wants to do it. She wants to get better. She wants to do whatever it takes to get to the next level. To put it simply, the Woodbridge resident is a winner. Come on, Tori! Tori won a gold medal in the 100 meter breaststroke at the 2019 Special Olympics World Games. It felt great to win something and to know I'm first place in all of the world. You could say Tori is like a little fish in that water. She never stops. She just keeps training five days a week, at least an hour a day. Tori is a legitimate athlete and she's getting better with every race. Go at it as fast as I can, full throttle and speed. So my I just go for it. Racing against the clock, representing the red, white and blue. The 25 year old is a leader for others with a disability. It's honestly the goal to inspire others. It's a good feeling to have. 
a swimming champion who's not slowing down anytime soon. Way to go, Tori Martin. Love her passion in that pool. Absolutely. And about the Redskins, so today they are possibly playing the spoiler yes, to yes. those uh, rival uh, Cowboys today. So they're losing right now 6-3 to three in Dallas in the second quarter, but hey, if they beat Dallas, Dallas yeah. has no chance of making the playoffs and being in Redskins country and a lot of Redskins fans, they're big rivals of Dallas Cowboys, Absolutely. so they'd be a little extra New Year present if the Redskins can end the Cowboys season today. Hey, you talk about Rivera possibly being the next coach. Will that change things yeah, completely? I mean, he, him, Kansas Marvin Steve. Lewis, uh, you know, Eric Bieniemy from Kansas City, but don't be surprised if they make a big announcement tomorrow. All right, thank you very much. Stay with us. Final look at the forecast is coming up. And sounds like it's going to maybe heat up a little bit. Yeah, so we're going to get the rain overnight tonight and tomorrow. We may even see some thunderstorms. In fact, yeah. the Storm Prediction Center, I think it's a little bit of an overreach, but they have the D.C. metro and areas south in what's called a marginal risk. That means an isolated strong storm or two going to be possible mm -hmm. as we head on into the day. Well, that's not it. Get off the screen. I don't know why. That's wrong. <laughs> is, is it, what you're looking at. Snow? Let's dump out of that. I don't know why that came up. That's yeah, an old Wipe graphic. that from your memory there. That didn't happen. <laughs> Nothing to see here. <laughs> Let's move right along. Thank you very much. Sure. And thank you for joining us. The news continues.